everybody. This is me, Amin. And this is Alex. And welcome to another episode of Let's Talk About. And in this episode, we're going to talk about the all-new 2022 Honda HRV that's just been released, uh, what, this week? Uh, last week. Uh, last yeah. week. So this is the th- this is Thursday, 21st of July. And uh, last week, Alex attended the launch of the, Hon- the all-new 2022 Honda HRV. Uh, so the question that we're going to ask is, uh, is it worth it? To get the new HRV, uh, the market is full of uh, very close competitors for this new car. Actually, this this segment of 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 uh, of vehicles, what's it called? Uh, they call it the B segment SUVs, uh, like a compact SUV, SUVs, yeah. right? Uh, the soft roaders, the the small soft roaders. Uh, that's how I used to call them. So in this segment, it's pretty uh pretty tight. Uh, we have. Uh, the popular ones, uh, the Proton X50, we have the X70, uh, the more obscure one is the uh, the Hyundai Kona, and the more, more I think more popular than the Kona is the the Mazda CX-3. Yep. Also, and then yep. also the Toyota Corolla Cross. Mm-hmm. So uh, Honda comes in, in into this very busy marketplace, yep. this busy segment, uh, and they feel that they have like a strong product to sell out there. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess, okay, Alex, you covered the event. Maybe you can talk us through like what is new with the HRV and what do you like about it and what you don't like about it. Okay, I think to start off first, right, it's not like uh, Honda's entering the space. I think it's more like defending the space because I when Honda HRV, the second gen, which is the first one officially came to Malaysia about 2015, right, I think that really... Um, really started the whole uh, compact SUV uh, mania. Mm. Yeah, so I think that did pretty well because it's compact yet it's very spacious and the price is just right. It's about 99,000 ringgit to 120,000 So Honda HRV was the first one to kind of like introduce a junior SUV yep. into Malaysia. So before that, there wasn't a junior SUV. I'm trying to think. RAV4? RAV4 is slightly bigger but that's like mostly imported. And, but it's yeah. CBU, right? It's CBU, yeah. Yep. All great imports. And, and I think uh, Toyota brought in the RAV4 a uh, few years back uh, and it cost about 300,000 ringgit or something like that. Now it's about 200,000 plus because they're mostly CBUs. Yeah. Yeah. So this, the hash of... You mean hash- CKD? Uh, last time was CBUs. Uh-huh. So now the... And the HRVs are CKD. That's why it's a lot more affordable. Yep. So it's like, oh, if you want to drive a Jazz, but I want something that's higher riding, yep. slightly bigger, then yep. that's a that's the obvious choice. And Toyota had an answer to that, kind of like a CHR, which costs a lot, a lot ah, expensive. Ah, yes. Like yes. yes, yes, yeah. yes. It looks cool, but for the price, wow, that's quite costly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yep. mm-hmm. Okay, you talked about the birth of the HRV in Malaysia. Yep. So basically, they are the segment the segment leader because they were the first to come into Malaysia with a really good price, about yep. 99,000 ringgit. Even back then, they had quite really interesting features. They had uh, auto hole, uh, electronic park parking brake, brake, which was like kind of class leading uh, at that time. And then the Magic Ultra Seats driver. Yeah, yeah. And, and that didn't, uh, I mean, if like you said, like if I want to buy like a hatchback, like a city, or I'm upgrading from a MyV, there's really not much of a competitor there. Yep. Uh, and then now the market is crowded. We forgot to mention. I think Ativa would also be something people would uh, people are looking at within this segment. Yep, but that's a, a lot cheaper. Yep. And also, I would say in terms of uh, premium or grade, it's a bit lower, but uh-huh. it takes all the right boxes in terms of safety. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but I think the one liter turbo. Power not so great lah. Yep, but the Ativa correct. But yeah. I think it's okay for the size and price range. And I would say it's class leading for the price tag. Like you have all the advanced safety features, mm. at least for the high spec model. So basically, I think what what the Ativa is doing is okay. So HRV created the price segment like below yep. hundred thousand, right? Yeah. So now uh, HRV is going up. Yeah. So because the cheapest one is about hundred and fourteen, hundred fifteen. Yes, hundred fifteen. Uh, then we have the Ativa. Filling up that gap. Yes, correct. Uh, for for things that are below ninety nine, uh, below one hundred k. Yeah, I think it's also good for option for them because, like you said just now, right? Like people who used to have a compact hatch like a MyV, right? I want to step up, yep. and then they step up to the HRV. Yep. So now it's like, hey, product, I've now have a solution. If you want to have a high riding car yep. like an SUV, so yeah, here's the Ativa. And you like Produa, you want to stay yep. in the Produa family. Yeah. You have an Ativa. So, I guess, okay, we can eliminate Ativa out of the equation. I mean, if you're looking for a local brand and your budget is strictly below 100,000 ringgit, then no-brainer? Yeah, would, no would, brainer. would I say that? That's a no-brainer? Yep. I mean, do I even would I even consider an X50? X50, pause. Okay, let's 100k. Interesting. I think you can possibly go for the lower spec. But the problem with Protons, right, the lower spec model, that's not the non-premium. Really 
it's not just that. I mean, the size is okay, the drive is okay, but the point is safety features mm. that's lacking. Mm. Yeah, to, like Proton, right? It's like okay, you want all the safety features, mm. you need to get the highest premium spec. So even the cheap spec X fifty does not have AED. six airbags. Only two airbags, I four think airbags, four airbags. But I think more, more crucially, there's no AEB and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's so, no like really modern standard active safety features yes. that you'd expect in a car. Yeah. I mean, like even the Ativa uh, has um, link keep assist, autonomous emergency braking. You yep. have that. No, I'm thinking like even the MyV has all those stuff. Yep, on a, yeah. In in the baseline, in the uh, base no. model. Uh, base, I think, I think you know, second AEB, but the full suite is a high spec. It's still a lot cheaper anyway. The yeah. high spec still a, a lot cheaper. Okay, so okay, we can eliminate anything below a hundred thousand. Ativa is probably like re- leading the pack there, mm-hmm. but the high spec Proton X50 is also around. A, okay, it's above a hundred thousand lah. Yeah. So if you have to strict, if you have a budget that's strictly below a hundred thousand, then Ativa is probably the way to go. Yep. Or if you can spend a bit more, like uh-huh. you said, right? X50, the highest high specs, one hundred and three thousand ringgit. Um, that could be another option. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I I quite like the X, the way the X50 looks. Same here. Over the Activa, plus the X50 has more power than the Activa, uh, and yeah, it has more smart features, and the dashboard is full digital. I'm not sure whether the Activa one is full digital though. Yeah, it's, it's also digital display, but I think X50 looks a lot better, more high res, yeah. and X50 has a couple of more extra toys like you have the parking assist feature, low speed follow, low speed follow all that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Now, back to the HRV. So, uh, Alex, you went to the launch. Yep. Uh, what's new? What's not so new? And what's good and what's not so good? I think the first thing is the design. I think it, it looks a lot better than the direct competitor in terms of price point, which is the Toyota Corolla Cross. Because Corolla Cross came in in a, in a time that whereby, hey, HRV is getting old. Mm. If you're looking for a car about 120,000 ringgit, mm. this is the new option you can get in the market. And yep. it's also packed with advanced safety features. The only problem is the design. I'm not a big fan of the Corolla Cross. So, uh, I just want I just want to go back to the cross, right? So when when the HRV, the old HRV was still in the market, the cross came in. Uh, it it offered a lot of uh, really good things. It's yep. bigger, bigger, yes. Uh, it's one point eight. Yeah, advanced safety features. Uh, advanced safety features. It's a, and it's a hybrid car. Yeah. So there's a lot of things going on with it, yep. and it kind of like took a lot of the potential buyers away from the HRV and into the Corolla Cross. Yeah. But now the new HRV comes around. Uh, like you said, the it looks so much better than the Corolla Cross. I don't know whether because the Cross we're you we're so used to it. I don't think so because I don't know about you guys. You leave a comment below, but for me, I find the front is still okay, uh-huh. but the back looks very dull. It's like, come on! I mean, Toyota could put more effort to make the back more sexier, lah. Okay, and then I think when it comes to the Toyota Corolla Cross, there's one thing that you cannot forgive it. Yes, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> the foot operated parking brake. Yes. Hello, come on! It's train train two, yep. and then you still have the. And I think the biggest glaring problem with that is a lot, not a lot, I think all of the Corolla Cross competitors have electric parking brake. Yep. And if you ask me, I, yeah. even at the very least, right, mm. I still prefer a hand-operated manual brake yep. than a foot-operated brake. Yeah. So it feels like a van. What else do you like about the HRV? So uh, besides that, I think also probably the first in in the in the in the world is that uh, we have three different powertrains because mm-hmm. like certain market like for example Thailand they have the hybrid spec mm-hmm. for the RS mode the high spec they get hybrid mm-hmm. in Indonesia and Philippines they don't get hybrid they only get the the turbo the one point five turbo which is same as the the Civic yep. and if you want for a cheaper version they give you the one point five liter NA which is from the <laughs> city no. which. Is, Obviously, under power compared yeah. to the previous HRV that has a 1.8 standard yes. across the range. Yes. So, that multiple choice. And mm. yeah, so the, you have three engine choices. So, we have the most engine choices in the region. Yep. So, that comes to my point where, you know, a lot of these brands, the the Honda, Toyota, even the Korean brands like the Kia and the Hyundai, they still see Malaysia as a really important market yes. despite our population being, uh, I think, the third less or the second smallest in terms of the country population. Yeah. You're smaller than like Thailand, Indonesia or Philippines. Yeah, yeah. We're definitely bigger than Singapore. Mm. But at the same time, our purchasing, the people that are buying cars, uh, I think we are number two in the region or number three, mm-hmm. uh, despite having much less population. So uh, a lot of you guys can, 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 that's like an interesting fact. So Malaysia is really key for all these players and they're investing and they're providing us with a lot of options. That's why you see now, right, where before there was not even a choice for you to buy like a junior SUV vehicle, now you are spoiled for choice. You have at least one, two, three, four, 
five five brands vying for your money within this segment. Yep. I think it's it's quite amazing. Yeah, I, uh, the engine is cool. Uh, w- what would be your engine choice? So there's the 1.5 uh, NA. I think I skip that. Yeah, <laughs> and then there's the 1.5 Turbo. Yep. With two variants, but power output is the same. Yep. And then we have the RS mm-hmm. uh, electric EHV. Yep. 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 So what would be your pick? For me, I'm actually very interested with the the RS EHV because mm. um, the Honda has been doing a lot of hybrid models and they're vastly very different. So mm. the latest version, the EHV uh, powertrain, mm. um, I would say in simple terms, it's like it can, it's kind of like an EV car, yep. but you have a petrol engine that runs as a generator or a range extender. Mm. So how it works is that okay, like most of the typical hybrid engines, is like okay, you have the electric and the petrol engine working together to move the car yes. most of the time, and then you can enable full EV mode. With the press of the button, but it's limited. It's like limited. The range, range is limited. Yeah. speed is limited. Correct. Yeah, and that's what's being offered in the Toyota Cross Hybrid, and I think Toyota has been doing that pretty well. I think it's quite reliable, but uh, for Honda, for this time around, you have a petrol engine, mm. you have a dual motor uh, hybrid system, so you have a propulsion engine, the electric motor that moves the car, and okay. a generator motor to generate electricity. Yeah. So at at low speeds, uh, if you have power in the battery, you just run EV mode, mm. and once you need more power. The engine kicks in mm. not to move the wheels, mm. but to charge, to provide electricity to the electric motor mm-hmm. to generate electricity, mm. and that's the most efficient way. And the only time the petrol engine actually moves a car mm. is at cruising highway speeds because that's like the most optimal. They think that in this setting, the petrol engine is more efficient than electric motor at highway speeds. So mm. that's when the engine moves the wheels. And fun fact. Despite on on despite a lot of reviewers saying that oh there's a CVT gearbox there's no gearbox in this car. Mm. In fact, when it kicks on to the the drive mode, the petrol driving mode, mm. it's direct drive to the wheels. Wow. Yeah. At highway speeds. So essentially, the way you describe this is, uh, technically the HRV is a kind of like a crude electric vehicle. Yeah, in a way. Because yeah. the main propulsion is the electric motor. Yep. And the engine is just supplying. Additional uh, power, not primarily to the wheels, but to the electric motor itself, yep. or to the battery. Yes, uh, sort of like a range extender. Yeah, and I think that's quite interesting because uh, the range for the for EV only range on the on the on the HRV is quite high, right? Uh, EV, there's no there's no specific numbers because. Uh, how Honda design it is that if you just step in the car, just drive it like a normal car. There's no mm. EV button mm. at all. So, if so the the car will manage the the power itself. Yeah. But I um and it goes all the way up to what 110. 170. Uh, the the maximum speed is 170 kilometers per hour. No, no, for the electric vehicle, electric, electric motor, electric motor. Um, it depends on how they split it because uh-huh. they is written up to 170 kilometers per hour. Uh-huh. So if let's say it's running out. Of uh, power then the engine kicks in as well and, in, yep. and also I guess it also depends on the like how much throttle you put in and stuff like that yep. correct and uh, uh, it's good that you brought that up because I wanted to say that you know uh, I used to believe that Toyota Corolla with their not Corolla Toyota with their hybrid synergy drive system was way more advanced and better than what uh, Honda had before so Honda had uh, what is it called uh, IMA the first one it's called integrated motor assist, motor assist, assist right yes. where the motor sits between the engine and the gearbox and will drive the uh, will drive the gearbox when, will drive the front wheels when required so you cannot um, the motor will not be able to run independently. Yep. Uh, what's different with the the difference between that and the Toyota, uh, Toyota's uh, hybrid system was the Synergy Drive was able to separate the electric motor and the engine, so both can run separately. Yep. Um, and that was like I think really good. But now I think again I think Toyota has like re I don't know what they're doing. They're kind of like. For this market, I don't know. They're not inv- advancing a lot of things. Uh. I would say like they're more like refining on the tested formula, whereas Honda is like really trying different stuff. Like the last gen was the IDC, the dual clutch uh, drive uh-huh. uh, technology. Yep. Yeah. So like now the, they're doing different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a DSG thing, right? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So I yeah, for me, I would agree. I would go with the RS uh, EHEV. Yep. And the rated amount, uh, fuel consumption is four point one liters per hundred km. That's is that good. It's pretty good. It's not as good as the CD hatchback, obviously because it's heavier. Mm. So last time the CD hatchback, based on that range, right, and mm. based on the fuel capacity, I can't remember. I think it's forty liters. Mm. It could possibly hit one thousand km. But this one, um, Honda didn't provide the fuel tank figure, so I'm not too sure. But for four point one kilometers, 
for 4.1 liters per 100 km, that's pretty efficient. So assuming the fuel tank is the same as the city, city then I think so probably liters, maybe right? 800, 800, 800 over kilometers per full per that's, full tank. That's really good mileage. Yeah. Like you can go to Penang, drive around, and then yeah. come back. Yeah, but this based on paper, yeah. So real world could be different. Yeah, yeah. But on paper, in terms of technology, I think it's pretty good. It's like f- most of the time you're running an, as an EV. Yeah, yeah. So I guess the if you were to plot this into a graph, right, or into like a matrix, right? Yeah. Um, you have the lower end of the segment, which is the 1.5s. I mean, like if you really need to get HRV and you really want a budget. Or if you run like a rental company, maybe yep. you can get Fleet, this. Yeah. Uh, I I don't see any interest or desire in this one. You lose a lot of um, features and technology. Not really. And power. Okay. Okay. Power you lose. Uh-huh. But one thing I I I'm and one thing that caught me by surprise that this time around, right? Honda's giving Honda Sensing standard across, across the board. Uh-huh. So even the cheapest Honda HRV is to get autonomous emergency braking, lane key assist, and all that stuff. But of course, you don't have the Honda Lane Watch. That's only reserved for the higher two spec models. Okay, okay, then I guess that's nice. But yeah. you know, it, there's not much of a difference. So let's say the 1.5 S, yep. which is a naturally aspirated engine, yep. you get you're paying 114,000, right? Yeah. The next one, the next one that's up uh, from that is the 1.5 liter turbo E variant. Mm-hmm. They still get the Honda Sensing and, and whatever not for 130,000. So the 15,000 ringgit difference. I mean, if you cut it across 7, 9 years, it's not that much like, to be honest. Unless you're talking about okay, I need uh, I need a, I need to save a lot uh, a lot a little bit more on the upfront. Yeah. So the, the upfront is something that for you to consider. But if you ask me the cheapest should be the E, lah. I feel. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't dip below the 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 E. Yeah, um, and, and not just that. You also lose two airbags for the S. They only give you four instead of six. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I think that's quite important. So, but if you if you're young, you know, I, I mean, if if I'm young, I just started working. I wouldn't <laughs> spend a hundred thousand on that. Yeah, car. of course. Uh, okay, yeah. so if if I draw the matrix, right? Um, you have the R S E H E V at one hundred forty thousand ringgit. Close to that is the Corolla Cross Hybrid Electric at 140,000 ringgit as well. It's 139,991. Yes, only in the box difference. Yeah. yeah. So it's about the same price. And and just below that is the X50 at 103,000. This is the top spec, right? And yep. then you also get the top spec two-wheel drive X70 1.8 yep. at 122. So I think the, the choice is clear. If you want to have some electric Electrification in your powertrain, the cross and the HRV is there. Yeah. If you want power and I guess more function and features and more, I think most more space. space. Yes, yeah, space. Uh, X70. The protons are the way to go. Yes. Um, X70 though. X50 I would say is pretty small, especially the boot. Yeah. That's why even when X50 came out, right? It's uh, like it's very close to X70. I guess if you want it to be more sporty. Yes, sporty. And, and not bother about the electric. A uh, powertrain, I think X50 gives the best bang for the buck in terms of power, perf- uh, power uh, features and everything else, yep. except for the space. Except space, yeah. The, the performance on one point five turbo is yeah. Wonderful. So so if you if you're gonna spend a hundred thousand for a for a car or for a SUV, a mini a micro a micro SUV, SUV. Or whatever you want to call <laughs> it, right? The HRV low spec, which is hundred fourteen thousand. Or the Proton X50, definitely go for the X50 high I'll go, spec, right? I'll go for X50 high spec, right? Yeah. Then we have the CX3. Other than the looks, I really cannot say anything about the car. Yeah, I think it's smaller than the X50. It's small. CX3 is small. The boot is really small, yeah. but it looks cooler. And I think it's a, it's a timeless design. I feel that like it still looks good in future. Yeah, but there's nothing inside, yeah. and it's so expensive. So the most the the low end is what 131 k. Yeah, and then a, the yeah. high end, the the CS thirty, which is like the slightly biggest hundred forty five. Yeah, and if you if you, if you ask me right, if you get CS thirty for hundred forty five, you can get a CX five, which is a much bigger SUV. Yeah, or a yeah. HRV. Yeah, sorry, a CRV. CRV. Yeah, yeah. So I think Mazda is out of the question. And then we have the Kona. Mm-hmm. Um, I I wouldn't I wouldn't spend money on the two liters because you're gonna spend more on you're gonna it's especially in, the ter- in terms of road tax and fuel consumption. Yep, so don't bother with that. Then you look at the turbos, right? So the sweet spot for me would be the Kona uh, Kona Hyundai Kona 1.6 turbo, not the N line, which is 150k. Yep, and that's also very close with the RS E H E V. 
Yep. But the sweet the sweet deal with the Kona Turbo is you get 200 horsepower. Yes. Which is the most powerful yeah, in this segment. Yeah, 198 PS, 265 Newton meters of torque. Like in terms of performance, hands down, the Kona 1.6 wins. And then the 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 maximum power figure, you get it from like below 2,000 RPM, right? Uh, yeah, the top. The, the yes. top two, yeah, you get like 1,600 Newton uh, RPM. And of course, the Kona looks different from other cars because mm. if you look at the Protons, the Toyota Cross and HRV, yep. this, this car's going to flood the market. Even to stand out, the Kona is the way yes. to go. Yes, and space-wise, I think it's not far off from the EHEV. For the front, I think it's similar, but for the back seat though, because, okay, I haven't tried the Kona petrol engine yet, mm-hmm. but I tried the EV, the back is very small. And yeah. like the boot's also very small. Yeah. But if you're going to use it as a daily driver, it's just you or maybe your girlfriend or wife, yeah. just two person. If you're single think, yeah. or just married, no kids, yeah. or a second car. Yeah, Kona is okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I quite like the look. I, I'm i fine with the handling. Like you, I've also driven the E-Max, the electric vehicle. I think it's quite quite an inter- interesting proposition. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. But is it worth 10000 more or 9000 more than the HRV and the Carrera Cross top spec hybrid? Uh, okay, Brain says no because mm-hmm. uh, depreciation. I think Honda will sell better. And Toyota, uh, yeah. Toyota will sell better. I, I, I don't really, I mean, I don't look at depreciation so much, but because you're going to buy a car, I mean, young people will buy this car and they're going to sell this and buy something else later down the line, maybe yep. five, seven years, right? And you want to be able to have that extra leverage, right? Yep. So that it, down the line, having... 3000 5000 extra to put into a down payment or or to not pay back the bank is more convenient. Correct. And I would say you'd save that much with the Honda brand and the Toyota brand yep. over the Hyundai. Correct. Um, but my heart tells me that 200 horsepower would be more fun than the HRV. No matter what the salesman tells you, right? So the salesman will tell you, because we saw the marketing material, the, the, the sales pitch material, uh, one one word what they were they was using was overwhelming acceleration <laughs> from the electric motor. Uh, I no. I this I, is not I like highly doubt that Yeah, la. this is not a sports car, man. I mean, if we say exciting acceleration, I agree. Uh, fun acceleration, I can I can I can I can buy that. Overwhelming, overwhelming. It's not <laughs> overwhelming if you if you buy an electric car. If it's an yeah. XC40 electric, zero to hundred in four point nine seconds. That is overwhelming. You know what's the zero hundred for the what HRV? Okay, okay, HRV? okay. Let me let me guess. Let me guess. Uh, what's the power? Okay. Um, one hundred and thirty-one, two hundred fifty-three newton. Uh, zero to hundred in in. 10 seconds? Yeah, 10.7. Oh, it says there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. MS. Okay. In fact, for that more exciting accelerate for the more exciting acceleration it will be the turbo that does it in like 8.8 seconds. Which one? The HRV 1.5 turbo. Oh, okay. Yeah. 8 second is pretty good. Yeah, because I that's mean, the one point. That's a civic engine. Okay. Yeah. You can save 30 30,000, so like I said, right? The top of the line Proton X50. Yeah. Turbo 1.3 can do 8 seconds 0 to 100 also. On paper, yeah. Um for much less. Yeah, correct. And we tested drive. We tested that in the track. Even it's even faster than the the BMW uh, X1 yeah. and also the the previous HRV. So performance wise, the Proton X50 is like bang for buck. Actually, the low spec BMWs don't bother lah. Yeah, I mean the it's I a one point five turbo we, three liter. We test drove the two one eight two one eight. Yeah, the same engine. It's yeah. terrible. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's really slow. Yeah. Okay, so. We talked about performance and all that. And I think performance is not something that you want to use every day. Yep. In-gear acceleration is is more important. And I feel like uh, I think all these cars kind of have similar performance yep. uh, pretty much. Not so far off from each other when it comes to overtaking and just cruising along the yep. highway. I would say that the HRV would save you more petrol than anything else in the market right now. Mm-hmm. Even more than the hybrid electric Corolla Cross. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a lot of things going on, uh, going for the HRV, but practical practicality wise, we also look at the boot space, right? Yeah. So the space at the back as well. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you noted that during the launch event and whatever materials that they've provided to you, Honda has been very secretive about the boot space of the new HRV. Yeah. And why do you think uh, that is so? 
like similar to smartphones, right? If they don't mention the processor or the battery life, the, 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 uh, yeah, the certain elements, right? You know that something's not good there. Yeah. So similar to the HRV, right? And mm. the, on the spec sheet, right? They didn't mention the boot capacity. Mm. And if you look at uh, the previous HRV, it was class leading at the time for the big mm. Sam SUV. It's like a compact hash. It's like a, looks like a looks like a jazz on steroids, right? Mm. And that had a boot capacity of 437 liters. That's quite big. It's quite big. Yeah. And that's before you fold the seats down with the magic seats. Uh-huh. And the new HRV, if you look at other markets like Singapore and the UK, the boot size is 320 liters. That's almost 100 liters less. And oh, that's a lot. That's a lot. And this is something, I think it's an ongoing trend with Honda these days, like even the Honda City hatchback. Um, we noticed that it's much smaller than the predecessor. But mm. instead, what they did was they increased the room capacity for the rear passengers. Ah, because I was about to ask you, so you lose boot space, what do you get? You, yeah, you have more leg room for the back seat. Uh-huh. Yeah, so but here's the problem with the HRV though. Although the leg room is okay, the headroom, despite the sloping roof mm. that makes it look like coupe, right? Mm. Um, it's I will say it's only comfor- comfortable for two passengers at the back yep. because the middle seat is quite small and the the cushion is quite high. Mm. In fact, in Australia, mm. the HRV is marketed as marketed as a four seater SUV. There's no seat belts for the middle seats. That's how small the middle. seat seat is yes and remember like the like previous uh, hybrids from Hondas right yeah and the, the sides near the door uh-huh. there's actually like a small vent for, for ventilation for the battery battery yeah uh-huh. so uh-huh. they have that as well so I guess maybe that's the reason why the, there's not much space for the middle seat yeah so they, they have to kind of like sacrifice that space for the battery so this indicates to me that the battery is significantly bigger than what you get from like a normal hybrid in, uh, yeah. car yeah and in fact the battery is even bigger than the city hashback and the City RS as well. Which uses the same powertrain. Uses the same powertrain. So they increase the battery. Uh, according to the presentation, they increase from 48 cells to 60 cells. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I, I'm very interested in this because this, this EHEV thing yep. really sounds to me, and after you mentioned all this, really sounds to me like a, uh, 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 like a crude electric vehicle. Yeah. Um, yeah, it is. It is somewhat like an electric vehicle. Yeah, so like if you want to jump to EV bandwagon, but uh-huh. you're hesitant about range anxiety, range anxiety and stuff this like is that. probably the closest thing to yeah. owning an EV. I I'm kind of like sad that they don't have like a full electric button. Yep. Uh, that like then manages the power for me, mm-hmm. so that I can really go full electric in a way that the bat- the engine does the the ECU of the HRV right yep. does not allow the engine to directly power the wheels yep. if I'm on this full EV yep, mode. Correct. It doesn't have that, right? It doesn't appear to be but maybe it's a good and bad thing because like um, like BMWs, right? if you, let's say you finish up the EV, uh-huh. EV mode, it ran out of, of um, electricity to power the electric motor, uh-huh. you'll be having very bad fuel economy because the engine has to move the car and charge the charge battery. The but but yeah. the thing is the, 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 even the BMW powertrain, the hybrid is very conventional in a yep. way that it's, it's, uh, it's sequential in that the engine powers the wheel or the engine charges the battery. Mm-hmm. Uh, the engine does not work in tandem the, with, with the... the motor. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it, correct. Does, it doesn't work like that. Yep. And this one, it does, right? Yep. So I have an engine which is, an, is, which is in essence, ex- uh, operating uh, a on an on a auxiliary level. Yep. And the electric motor is predominantly the one powering the car, which yep. is very interesting. Yep. And that gives me this opportunity that, okay, if you really want really want to go full EV, you can. And then maybe the car can show me like, okay, if you go on full EV, these are the limitations. Your yep. top speed is reduced to this much. If you're going on highway, don't use this, whatever. Yep. I, I don't mind yep. uh, doing that. I don't, I don't really care that it's not plug in at all. I really find this very interesting. Was that you mentioned that in Thailand... Uh, the HRV comes with uh, sunroof. Uh, sorry, um, glass yeah, panel. Uh, yeah, like a glass roof, right? Yeah, but you can't open. <laughs> it's a moon roof, right? You call yeah, it moon roof. Uh, I, I mean, I just call it. Okay, I want to say I call it panoramic, but it's not really panoramic because it's, it's not full. Yes, uh, it's a two-piece. The, and the crappy part about that is you don't get like blinds. It's manual, right? Oh, the front is blind. I, you know, the front is you can you can slide in like out. a normal sunroof. Yeah, but, but you back, cannot open it. You can't open it. Uh-huh. Yeah. And the back, right, is that like you cover with these plastic covers, like a two-piece, like a ta- uh-huh. kind of like a taga. Yeah, yeah. It's, you, cl- you cover it from the inside. Uh-huh. And the thing is, let's say you in the middle drive, okay, I want to check out what's going on outside. Yeah. You need to uh, <laughs> detach the, the, the two pieces. The cover. Cover, and yeah. then you're going to be like, hey, we're going to Where, where do you put this? Because the, okay, the boot is small. Yep. And there's like a tunnel cover. And you, yeah, the tunnel cover is attached to the to the rear door. So uh, I was like, you can't really throw it at the back. You can't throw it at the back unless you take it off. Uh, <laughs> it's so impractical. But 
in a way, it's good that Honda Malaysia is not being the option in Malaysia. Yeah, I don't. I think a lot of people will really hate that. Okay, so let's go with the extra things that the HRV has that the um, Corolla Cross doesn't. Yeah, so I think the number one one, like we mentioned just now, is mm. it comes with electric parking brake with auto hold, mm. which is the same as the previous HRV, and I think that's super convenient, especially during traffic jams. Once you plug that in, when you drive to a complete stop at traffic lights, it will engage the 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 parking brake immediately, and you can just you know no need to pull any lever whatsoever. But on a Toyota Corolla Cross, it's foot operated, so you need to press all the way down to release it. Need to press to release it again. It's very manual. And the next thing that I like about the HRV is the Honda Lane Watch. So it's like a camera that's attached on the left side mirror of the car. This is an old technology. Isn't yeah, it? it's from the Honda Accord, Accord a yeah. long time ago, yeah. where they only had like one single camera on yes. the left side. Yeah, correct. Yep, 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 so okay. now it's now it's available on the <laughs> on the HRV, but it's oh. only on the higher two spec models only. I think it's pretty neat. So at least it so when you, you are signaling to go the to left. the left lane, only yeah. only on the left, lane. only the left. Uh, unfortunately, there's okay. no. There's no both sides. Like, I know like the new Hyundai is uh, be on the both left and right, yes, right? Yes. Yeah. So unfortunately only one side. And of course the Magic Ultra Magic 6. Seats, Magic yeah, 6, yeah. They're so practical. Uh-huh. Uh, I think that's great if you're going for IKEA a lot. Mm. And one thing that's new on the HRV is it has a power boot with a walk away function. Mm. So normally you want to open the boot, you like you use the leg kick motion at the back mm, to open up. Mm, mm. But let's say if your hands are full, uh what you can do is you just press a button at the door. And they, it will illuminate if walk away function enabled. Mm. You just get your stuff, walk away. Then you close by so, by itself. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I I I don't know whether that's a, a useful feature. I think it is because, because yeah. Okay. My yeah. concern is let's say I walk away across the street, right? Yeah. And then only it will close. Like, what is the distance? Oh, it's not that far. I think I walk away maybe about three meters. Okay. Yeah. It's not that far. Yeah. I'm just concerned that somebody can just go in and take something Well, that that thing is trying to activate. Actually, you know what? Mm. Now I think about it, right? I think it only can close. It doesn't lock the car. Which is even worse. So, it's, <laughs> so which means it closes the door and walk away like, okay, now I need to get my keys to lock it. No, I think it, it will <laughs> lock because normally uh, if you open the boot, uh, you can lock the car. And if you lock the car and then the boot closes, it will lock. Uh, with the car as well. Oh, you mean you mean like if I open the boot, uh, I lock it first. Yes. Then oh, correct, okay, correct, okay. Correct. I think that, so that might it, work. It might be that. Um, but yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, from all these extra things, right? Electronic parking brake, Honda Lane Watch, Ultra Magic Seats, and this walkaway power boot thing. I, I would put check marks on the electronic parking brake and the Magic Seats. Everything mm-hmm. else, I don't really care. What does the uh, cross hybrid have that the HRV doesn't? Uh, number one will be the seven airbags. So yes, one extra airbag for the knee. For the driver's side. Driver's side, yes. Okay. And, and, and it has 360 camera, which the HRV doesn't have because okay. the HRV has like a reverse camera with multi-angle. Does item. it have a front camera? No, nope, there's no front camera. There's, and then the, you know, mistaken, yeah, the Honda HRV doesn't even have front sensors. What? Yes. Which the Corolla Cross has. That's important. For front sensors, I don't really use it. I, okay, I'll talk about that later. Okay, after that. Okay, and then <laughs> another thing that uh, surprisingly that is omitted on HRV mm. but it's available as standard on the Corolla Cross is blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert which is pretty useful if you're backing up from a parking lot and you can't see what's happening on the on the sides. Okay. And the, the Corolla Cross has a larger 9-inch display mm. but I must say that the implementation of the uh, Apple CarPlay for the um, Corolla Cross mm. is a bit, it's a bit awkward like, because the cable, right, you need to plug the head unit because the head unit looks a bit like an OEM. Yeah, yeah. it's it seems like, again, Toyota, Toyota's cost cutting is is blatant and terrible. Yeah. I hate it because it they really want to show you that this is where they cut costs. Yeah. And one of them is OEM suppliers for their Inca entertainment. Yeah. You get it from the, I mean, my first experience was when I saw the, when I was in the uh, Yaris. Okay. I think the head unit is terrible. Mm-hmm. It's like I, I, it's like something you can buy from Brothers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and okay. it's the same for the yeah. Corolla Cross Hybrid. Yeah. And it's no excuse because you're paying a hundred and thirty plus yeah. ring thousand ringgit, yeah. and you get this really cheap looking, uh, terrible sounding, and very terrible in terms of the interface yeah. uh, head unit. I, I think that's. Sad. At least the Honda looks more integrated because the, when you want to plug in the Apple CarPlay, yeah. right, you plug it at the port at the bottom, yeah. which is much where, neater. Where you put your phone. Yeah. This one is like, okay, it's, the head unit is way up there. there yeah. And the outlet for you to plug your phone in is up there as well. Yeah. And so it's, it's And you know you're going to... For me, it's like, when, 
I have uh, my car. The the plug is at the bottom, mm-hmm. right? And I know I have my cable there permanently plugged in because yep. I'm going to plug in my phone all the time, yep, so especially if it supports Android Auto or Apple CarPlay because yep. that's what you're going to do when you yep. get in the car. It's more tidy that way. Whereas for this one, right, uh, the car cross, you're going to have that white cable dangling yeah. all, all the time. from the, Dangling, the, the, jutting out. Or covering the aircon a bit, going down, it looks yeah, ugly. It's yeah. terrible. I yep. mean, why? Why? Yeah, but the thing about the hash RV though that I don't like is that yeah, it has Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, uh, uh it's eight inch screen. Is mm. that unfortunately we don't get the the nicer version, the nine inch one, uh-huh. which the European market has mm. and the Civic RS has. That mm. one is nine inch display and that has a wireless Apple CarPlay. Wireless Apple Apple CarPlay is uh, quite important. Yeah, and it yeah. has a proper uh, uh round knob to control the volume. So the hash RV ones have buttons. At least it's not touch panel, it's yeah. physical buttons yeah. to adjust volume. Yeah. Yeah. So uh yeah okay so the cross also has front parking sensors and radar cruise control with AEB. Yes, because most most of new cars from Honda right they don't use radar anymore. They uh, just cameras so, cam- solely based on cameras. Uh-huh. So they claim the cameras better because it's a wide wider field of view, so it yep. can recognize stuff better. But uh-huh. for me, I feel more I have more confidence with radar. No, I think it's, it should be a combination of both. So yep. radar only sees uh shape. Yep. and you cannot have like a definition. Oh, they have both actually for cross. Yeah, combination. Yeah. So, yeah. so for the the problem with radar is that uh, I see a blob. Mm. I don't know what that blob is uh, unless you have a higher definition radar and that's going to be expensive. Yep. Cameras nowadays and, you know, with artificial intelligence and face uh, and object, object recognition, recognition yep. is so much better now that you're able to do that with much less and that's yep. why most cars, even the more advanced cars like Teslas yep. and all that, they, they stop using radars yep. and uh, start to implement um, vision optics, right? Cameras. Yep. Because it's just more, re- more, it's cheaper but at the same time, it's more, more, uh, more definition, more reliable than radar. But there's also some cons like certain instances that um, camera assisted systems might yep. not work if let's say if you're driving and it's glaring for example it's glaring yeah, so, so that's anything that's, yeah. that's optical right? Yeah. glare haze uh, rain yep. uh, those things are going to be slightly challenging for the camera systems yep. compared to radar so that's why you know having both is better yep. in this case uh, Toyota might be more premium mm-hmm. in terms of providing the safety aspects yes but having said that, and you know, I'm always a guy f- that that looks into the nuances, and and I think I I mentioned this in a previous episode uh, when we talked about cars. I think I was talking about my V. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't mat. It doesn't mean that if a cheap car has all the boxes ticked in terms of AEB, uh, lane keep assist, uh, low speed follow, radar cruise control, whatever, doesn't mean that all those are ticked it's going to be functioning the same way as like a premium car like a Mercedes or a BMW. Yep. Uh, and I would argue the same thing with this, right? Mm-hmm. So it doesn't mean that uh, the Corolla Cross or the HRV has it that is better than, or, or it's similar, right? Yep. But I would argue that these systems are better than what you get in a MyV mm-hmm. yep. uh, or, or a cheaper model because the definition is higher and it's just much, much better in terms of the functionality. The definition and also the frequency at, w- at, at the rate which the system is sampling the data to provide the feedback uh, back into the, the car. Um, yeah, so I think now comes the time where we decide uh, which one will we get. Okay, so for me, like the seven things the, hy- the cross hybrid has that is important to me, mm-hmm. I think uh, maybe actually... Okay, the, the airbag is important. 360 camera, not so much. Yep, because again, ah, this is a good example. You take the box 360 camera, right? And you're like, okay, this guy has 360 camera. The implementation of 360 camera is vastly different from one automotive brand to another. Yep. Uh, I think the best ones are Mercedes. And for this price range, I would say 360 camera, the best for this price range will be the X70. The Proton one? Yeah. Uh, the 70 or the 50 or both? S70. S50 is quite terrible. Yeah? Yeah. And it's the worst one of this not this just this segment but the worst I've seen so far in a car is from the Volvo XC40 the 3 camera yes why it's terrible because uh, I don't know maybe we can get like some b-rolls of this so that you guys can see what I mean right it feels claustrophobic in a way that okay for a lot of the other systems the 360 camera will take the picture and then the system will try to stitch the picture to make it look as normal as possible. Try to make it like seamless or like yeah. a 360 Yeah, like VR. a really 360 view of what yeah. you can see around. Correct. Right? With the Volvo one, 
I they don't even attempt to do that. It's so like, it's yeah. a 360 camera. They 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 pump in the the feed directly into the monitor, and all you see is this really stretched image of oh. your surrounding, and it feels really claustrophobic because it feels like I'm in a really small alley. So it's not even helping you at all. No, it's making it, you worse. It's distracting. <laughs> right? I don't even <laughs> depend on that. Oh my god, so, that's just completely pointless then. So it's a good example of like, okay, does this have 360? Yes, but. It's not about whether it has it or not. It's how it's been implemented. Yeah, it must be done properly. Yeah, yeah. and I think I think that's really uh, important. So you gotta look into that when you're buying a new car. Yeah. Now back to our questions. I think we've 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 we've, we've talked a lot about the HRV and, and all the other segments. I hope it's been informative for you guys. Now it's come to this decision where we answer the question, right? The Honda, the 2022 Honda HRV, is it worth it? For me, so asking it, you the question. Yeah, ask, asking yeah. you the question. I'm supposed to answer here. Yes. I would say yes, uh, specifically for the hybrid, uh, the uh, the RS eHGV. So you're saying within that price segment, mm-hmm. 140,000 ringgit, nothing beats it for the hybrid technology. Yes, for a new vehicle, especially for the hybrid. <laughs> Because okay, <laughs> what else can you get for one hundred forty thousand? Because like I said, right, it depends on your priorities as well. If you want the space, right, the X X seventy wins hands down. It costs yeah. like one hundred twenty two thousand ringgit for one point eight, one point five. If you don't need that performance, one hundred eighteen thousand ringgit. That's mm. that's super good value for money, and you get all the advanced safety features. One hundred eight thousand. Mm. I will get that over the the What's base model. Sorry, what are sorry. you talking about? One one eight. The X70. X70 1.5, okay. the latest version. So there's a smaller one. It's using, basically using the X50 engine in the X70 body and you have the full uh, advanced safety system for 118,000 ringgit. Yep. That's like value for money if you want space. Mm. But if you want something that's uh, compact, that's that's easy to, to, to maneuver in city areas and you want the latest um, uh, hybrid technology, I would say that the HRV is a very good proposition. Yeah, I think the HRV has a lot going for it overall. So it's not great uh, in certain aspects. Yeah, the size is smaller. Yep. But it's practical in terms of use of space inside. The Magic Seats yeah, magic really seat, does yeah. it for me. Yep. Uh, the, the hybrid technology, that's something that's Yeah, that's to good. be able to have a potential of maybe 800 to 1,000 kilometers from just one tank. Yeah. Uh, I think that's really good uh, considering the petrol prices that we have now. Yep. Um, and to have the experience of an electric vehicle but not the headache yep. of an electric vehicle, I think that's cool too. And to have that really, I think, fresh look from Honda. Yep. It's it's grown up, modern, but still sporty and 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 and, and fresh. Yeah, it looks more exciting. Yeah. yeah. Uh I think that's enough for me to overlook the space aspect. But then I mean, if this is my only car, my test for this car w- is if I'm able to put in my bicycle without taking the front wheels off. Mm. Do you think that's possible? I think we managed this. I think you can possibly put it in the back row. You just put the seats up. You should be able to. I want to be able to try that. Yeah. Or another way is to light flat and then slide it from the back, from the boot. I want to be able to try that. So maybe Lovey, our producer, can uh, get a review unit from Honda. We can try to see whether I can fit my bicycle Mm -hmm. in the uh, HRV. Yep. Without taking the front wheels off. So you'd spend your 140,000 on the... HRV. It's yeah. worth it, lah. Yeah, and for, for me, I also bias uh, in the sense that uh, the the car cross the moment I read the full operator parking brake turn off. <laughs> really, that's a turn off. Yeah, if they if this, if that wasn't there, I will then it'd be consider. a tougher choice. Yeah, it'd be a tougher choice because one thing is is bigger space, mm. and also it's based on a larger platform. It's based on the Corolla Altis. So I think in terms of ride, I think that'd be much better. Yeah, I I tend yeah. to agree. I think uh, Hon- uh, Toyotas generally are much more quieter and more comfortable yes. compared to their competitors. Correct. Uh, yeah, I agree also. The foot-operated parking brake is terrible because you use that every day. Yes, that's the an annoying thing. Yeah. Everything else is okay. I'm, I'm happy with that. Yeah. What about yeah. the Protons though? Protons, uh, I, think, I think for me, it's a perception-wise. For me, in terms of value for money, Using your your left brain, mm. yeah, definitely. You there's no way, not uh, there's no way that the X seventy cannot come out on top because it takes the right boxes. It's good space. It's good performance. The only problem is that you're not concerned about spare parts because there's a lot of problems shortages, shortage spare parts. Yep. And even they're struggling to deliver the cars. And in fact, the time writing right, mm. Proton's website didn't even include the the pricing for the X fifty with the SST 
included. So I'm wondering, like, are they taking orders or not? That's a bit weird. Yeah. So it looks like they're trying to put, try to put the sales on hold first until they sort out their their uh, supply chain issues. Even and having said that, even Honda is have, is, is facing problems with delivery. So they already have like what twenty thousand bookings, and they can and the waiting time for the HRV is twelve months. Yeah. So you buy now, you get it next year. Maybe by next year, oh, I forgot I put, I put a down yeah. payment for a car. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. And okay, for me, the problem with the Proton is that it's long in the tooth already like the X70 is an old model to be honest yes uh, and the X50 is kind of midlife already another problem with the Proton is that it doesn't support Apple CarPlay and the Auto yeah not natively yeah uh, that sucks that sucks be yeah. because it, it has such a good digital system yeah it's good it's, um, it's huge and, and, and I like the the, the infrastructure cluster I like yeah. the safety features I mean I've, I've not I've not complained the only complaint about it is the, the Apple CarPlay support yeah yeah. and then you have the Hyundai range um yeah. Um, I think that's the reason why you don't see a lot of the corners on the road. For me, Hyundai is good if you want to really stand out. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt about it. Because performance-wise, good. I mean, in terms of infotainment, yeah, you have it. Nothing wrong with it. Yeah. But just not right for this market in terms of the pricing and what it has on offer. Yeah, you want to be different? 10K extra. Yeah, and then we have the Mazda CX-3, CX-30. Uh, this is like way, way, way left field. I think people who buy Mazdas either really know somebody that worked in Berjaya <laughs> or either they are working in Berjaya so that they can get like really good discounts. For me, the problem with Mazda is that because these models we mentioned, CX3, CX30, right? They're CBUs and it's so close to the CX5 which is a much bigger car and that's cheaper because it's locally assembled. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, aside from the looks, I really cannot justify, I, I really cannot justify why buying a Mazda. This You mean these two specific models, right? I mean, Mazda in general, Yes, but the cars, the cars are kind of boring. What do you mean? I mean, it looks great, better. but it's boring. I don't know. I think it's better than the CRV and the, uh, yeah. Okay, maybe yeah. that's a topic for another episode. We're like really running out of time. <laughs> what do you guys think? Um, is the Mazda any good? But to answer your question, or put them in the comment section below. But to answer your question in this episode, is the Honda HRV worth it? The answer is definitely, definite yes. It takes all the right boxes. It's priced reasonably well. Has really great performance and uh, fuel economy to boot, and the technology. The downside is obviously the space. Yeah. Um. But you know. I don't think you lose out a lot. Uh, probably like a hundred liters, but it makes up with uh for it makes up for it with the magic seats. Yeah, and the looks of it, of, of course. The only downside is the twelve month waiting period, which yeah. is crazy. Yeah, hopefully they will go down because uh, Honda said that limo test is how many of the twenty thousand will convert to actual sales because you know it depends Perform- on uh, what's this loan approval, loan approvals, uh, what, uh, and some of them might drop off. Oh, I expect it to be cheaper. Yeah. They might drop so, off. no, bro, I already got my X fifty yeah. stock or whatever, or you know something yeah. like that. Uh. Okay, so that's pretty much it. What do you guys think? Uh, drop your comments in the comment section below. We want to know what you think because we've been getting like really good comments in our all our past, not all, most of our recent videos, especially on the public transportation uh, and 5G. Uh, you guys have been putting in a lot of comments. I think uh, we really appreciate it. So please keep the comments coming. Uh, and we are also available on podcast. So if you want to listen uh, to this episode in your car, you can just look for us, uh, search show. Let's talk about on any of your favorite podcast platforms, and we're there. We're on Spotify and everywhere. So just look for search show. Let's talk about, and we're there. Uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, thanks very much for watching. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video. Uh, comments and suggestions, we really welcome them. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And for those who are listening to us on um, uh, podcasts, uh, if you want to put in your comments or put in your thoughts, uh, drop them uh, in our email. Drop a voice note in our email at let's talk about at soyachinchow.com. Yes, yes. And uh, if it's interesting or thought provoking or really wonderful, uh, we'll put them uh, in our next episode. All right, this is me, Armin. And this is Alex. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Catch you guys later. Bye. Bye.